Hi chemists, welcome to video notes number four. Today we'll be talking about the structure of the atom, something you guys already know quite a bit about. Alright, so the first thing that you want to do is review what we already know about the atom. You guys know a lot, alright? So you know that the nucleus is in the middle of the atom, and most of the mass of the atom is located in the nucleus. Alright, so the nucleus contains protons, uh, which have a positive charge, and it contains neutrons, which have a neutral charge. Alright, so the nucleus is made of protons and neutrons. Alright, and then hanging out outside of the nucleus are the electrons, and they're uh, swirling around rapidly all the time, uh, and they have a negative charge. Alright, so some of you guys might have been hearing about what's going on in Japan right now. Alright, so what happened in Japan was there's this big earthquake, caused a massive, terrifying tsunami, which then basically damaged a nuclear power plant and has been causing some leakages. All right, so you, you may have been hearing about this in the news or reading about it or hearing about it from, uh, from your parents. Um, and what we want to do is to help you guys to be able to understand what it is that's actually going on here and why it's a big problem. All right, so why is this dangerous? What's actually leaking out? Um, and should we be worried about it here? Um, and also for the people in Japan. All right, so there are a couple atomic things that you need to be familiar with in order to understand uh, what's going on with the power plant and the, uh, the leakages from these power plants in Japan. Uh, so the first thing we need to talk about is this idea of a mass number. So you just reviewed that the two things in the atom, in the nucleus, that compose the, the heavy part of the atom are, are just the protons and the neutrons. Remember that electrons are so tiny, they don't really weigh anything at all. So the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, the only two things in the atom that have any mass at all. So for example, um, we have carbon 12. This is carbon with a mass number of 12. If you look at the periodic table, you can see that carbon always has six protons. If it didn't have six protons, it wouldn't be carbon. Uh, there are some atoms of carbon that also have six neutrons. If you add six protons plus six neutrons, you get 12, which is the mass number for carbon 12. And the number of protons always stays the same. The number of neutrons can change though. So we might not always have carbon with six neutrons. Perhaps in this last example, you can have carbon with eight neutrons. This is called carbon-14, and here's why. Carbon always has six protons, plus eight neutrons, and you get a mass number of 14. So that other type of carbon is called carbon-14. So these different types of atoms of the same element, but with different mass numbers, uh, are called different isotopes. So isotopes are atoms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons. And of course, you're writing this down because it's underlined. Uh, so let's go look at these. Uh, examples. So uh, isotopes have different masses. This is because they have different numbers of neutrons. And you know that neutrons have some of the mass in an atom. So here are a couple examples. We've got carbon-12, there's carbon-13, and there's carbon-14. So carbon-12, you can see the example down here, has six protons and six neutrons. Carbon-13 still has six protons, very important, but it has seven neutrons. So six plus seven is 13. And finally, a very unstable atom is carbon-14. It still has six protons, but it has eight neutrons, which gives it a mass number of 14. This guy can start to fall apart. It'll lose a neutron, and then it'll lose another neutron and turn into carbon-12 over a long period of time. And if you guys have heard of carbon dating, uh, it's these isotopes of carbon that are responsible for us being able to date things that are really, really old uh, based on which isotopes of carbon they have in it. One of the major uh, principles having to do with isotopes in chemistry is this idea called average atomic mass. Okay, so on the periodic table, we have a mass given for every element, um, and that mass is actually an average of all of the different isotopes of that element. You guys have been using this average atomic mass all year when doing stoichiometry calculations. You just maybe didn't know why it was a decimal. It's not a whole number. So here's why. So when you, you know, look at carbon on the periodic table, it has a mass of 12.0107, right? And that means that some of the carbon uh, on Earth is not carbon-12, but rather carbon-13 or carbon-14. So the mass on the periodic table is a decimal. It's an average of all of those atoms of carbon and not just the most common one, which is carbon-12. So on the next slide, we're going to uh, do a practice calculation of how to calculate the average atomic mass. 
Alright, so I didn't underline everything on this slide because it's kind of hard to underline calculations, but I want you to write down everything that's on this slide so you have one complete example written down in your notes. Alright, so let's say we wanted to answer the question, what is the average atomic mass of a lump of carbon made of 40% carbon-12, 50% carbon-13, and 10% carbon-14? All right, and actually doing this calculation is really simple if you follow a specific procedure that we're going to show you right now. All right, so what you want to do is you want to take the abundance of each of the isotopes, we're going to write that as a decimal, multiply it times the mass of that isotope, and that gives us a total that we're going to use in our last step. All right, so let's look at this together. Remember, abundance is the, the percent of each isotope. So when you, when you hear the word abundance, you should think, oh, what percent of each isotope is that? Exactly. All right, so uh, over here on the left, we've got uh, 0.40. All right, so I've taken the 40% from the problem and converted it into a decimal. So 40% is 0 0.40. I have the mass of that isotope, which is 12 AMUs, right? I have 40% of carbon-12. And I multiply those together to get 4.8 AMUs. All right, so this is the amount of mass that carbon-12 contributes to the overall mass of our compound, or of our element, excuse me. Um, so then I do the same thing for the next isotope. Convert my abundance to a decimal, which is 0.5. I multiply it times the mass of that isotope, and I get 6.5 AMUs. All right, I do the same thing for the last isotope. I've got, I convert 10% into 0.1. I multiply it times 14 AMUs, and I get a total of 1.4 AMUs. All right, now all I have to do is add up the contribution of each element, and I get a total mass of 12.7 AMUs. All right, so this sample of carbon has an average mass of 12.7 AMUs. Good. So we're going to look at one more example. This is especially important because uh, early on in this week, you're going to be doing a lab with your lab group where you will get a, a sample of a brand new element that we've just discovered, I think, uh, in the back of someone's locker. Is that well that's where it came? Yeah, good job, guys, keeping some stuff in the back of your lockers. So you're going to be determining the average atomic mass of this new element. So you'll be following the same procedure. Good. Okay, so here's one more example. We're going to use oxygen this time. And in this particular sample of oxygen, 25% of it is oxygen 15, so that's a, a mass number of 15. 40% is oxygen 16, and 35% is oxygen 17. So we'll set up exactly the same table, so abundance, and you should be thinking to yourself that comes from the percent, times the mass of the isotope gives you the total. So we've got 25%, or 0.25, uh, has a mass of 15 AMU, and that gives us a total contribution of 3.75. 40%, or 0 0.40, has a mass of 16 AMU, and that gives us a total of 6.4. And the last isotope, uh, which is 35%, uh, has a mass of 17, which gives us a contribution of 5.95 AMU. When we add up all three of these, we get a final average atomic mass of 16.1. So again, does this answer make sense? Well, if we look up here, most of the mass, or most of this isotope is made up of, uh, most of the sample is made up of the isotope oxygen 16. And our final answer came up pretty close to 16, so I feel satisfied with that answer. All right, so I don't know how much you guys already know about radiation. I'm sure you've heard this word before. Uh, but in science, when we talk about radiation, what we mean is the release of neutrons from an atom. Okay, so some of these really big, unstable isotopes uh, are going to release lots of neutrons. Right? So for example, iodine-131, okay, this is the isotope that people are so worried about in Japan. All right, so this isotope is present at the nuclear reactors there, um, and it's releasing a lot of neutrons. Okay, and that can be really good because we can use it to make electricity. Okay, so nuclear power plants take the uh, energy that's released when neutrons escape from an atom, and they use that to make electricity. All right? The problem is that this release of radiation can also be really, really damaging to the body uh, and cause all sorts of different cancer and health problems. All right? So when we have this radiation being released uh, in an uncontrolled way, it can be really harmful. All right? So down here in the, the lower right, we see the Springfield power plant from The Simpsons. Bad news and there. Yeah, there's some really good reasons why we don't want Homer Simpson in charge of our iodine-131. All right, so remember to write down uh, a two to three sentence summary of what you learned today and then any questions that you have that you'd like to have us answer for you tomorrow.